What up is Marcus? Now we are going to be redrafting the 22 Dynasty Draft Rookie Class here. And so if this video is important, particular for those looking for whether it is sophomore step-ups, whether it is the rankings of last year's rookies compared to where they are from a year ago to today, and we're going to have some rankings of where I previously had them as well. So this, again, is a good video for people that are looking at how do rookies do? Do we believe in the hype? Do we not believe in the hype? Where are the rankings compared to? Are we comparing Chris Olave and Traylon Burks? Where are they? Who's better? Uh, Christian Watson and George Pickens. Which one do we have higher? So these are important questions to be answered here. We have DeAndre Swift, signed jersey. When we hit 2K, we'll be giving it away to one of you guys. The number one pick, and this we're going to be going through this one pretty shortly here, is Mr. Brees Hall. Uh, he had, in seven games, 681 yards and five touchdowns. If you look at that at a per-game basis, you're looking at a high-end RB2, probably a low-end RB1. I mean, <laughs> easily. I, I mean, at seven games, you just double that, and you're looking at 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns total. And so you're looking at an RB1, and I think Brees Hall, if he recovers in time, it was supposedly a clean ACL injury. He should be an RB1 next year. He's my number two overall dynasty running back. That just shows how high he is in particular when, it, when you're comparing – B. John Robinson, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, we'll be talking about Kenneth Walker here shortly. And so, well, I don't want to hurt the microphone here. <laughs> so, and Brees Hall, easily. 101, if you're redrafting this class or uh, looking for that sophomore, uh, that if you could pick it out of this class, it's, kind of, it's Brees Hall. And then number two is Kenneth Walker. I had him third ranked. Uh, he kind of floated between two and three if you were watching any of the videos last year. I had a really hard t time between him and number two, which we're going to be talking about right in my three spot. And so they just do a little flip-flop here. But really, these two are really hard. If you need a running back or you need a wide receiver, they really are the flip-flop of the group. And so in 15 games, Kenneth Walker was 15th in standard, 18th in PPR, 1,215 yards and nine touchdowns. Just a monster and, and showed his receiving capabilities. And I know a lot of people were, were ha hammering that out in his college game that he was not good at that. And it wasn't that he was not good at that. He just didn't get the opportunities at Michigan State. And so I think that you can check that box off and say, yeah, he's capable of doing that. He's a three down stud and, and he is going to be, I mean, he is really high up there in my dynasty ranks. I'm not going to spoil it away. Um, I have all my rankings and stuff from last year. And I'll be putting up some new stuff here on Patreon soon. So if you're already a Patreon supporter, you're going to be getting that here soon. So number three is was my number two last year. It was Garrett Wilson. Um, I felt like most people were into the Drake London category, but uh, Garrett Wilson was what I had. And, and so he was 21th in standard, 20 or 21st, not 21th, 21st in standard, 21st in PPR, 147 targets, 147 targets on a horrible Jets passing offense, led 83 for 103 and four. If you... Even just continue to say, okay, he's going to get the same targets. He's going to have the same 85 to 95 catches. And he's going to have 1,100-ish yards. And you just move those four touchdowns to seven, eight touchdowns. You're talking about a high-end wide receiver two, low-end wide receiver one. Year in, year out, Garrett Wilson, one of my favorite dynasty uh, wide receivers long-term. He's so young, too. So Garrett Wilson it is... My, there was a group, and we, if you watched the videos last year, there was a group of a couple of wide receivers that were together. I feel like Garrett Wilson has now separated himself into his own little category, uh, just slightly above some of the names that we're going to talk about, like right now, like Drake London. Drake London was my fifth overall prospect. Uh, he's now moved up to four. We've had a wide receiver to drop, but Drake London. 37th in standard, 31st in PPR. My biggest concern was the first couple of years. I talked about it, why I thought he was overdrafted in dynasty startups and he had 117 targets a lot of targets good targets 72 for 866 and four touchdowns his last four games though gave him that kind of so if you if you can buy the little dip here last four games 70 96 or yeah 70 96 47 and 120 if you can buy the dip we don't know who the quarterback's going to be it, it could be desmond ritter it could be just a horrible situation in atlanta kyle pitts is going to come back but drake london is a potential buy here so again you're talking about 21-year-old wide receivers that we're going to be talking about today. If he doesn't hit till he's 23 and doesn't fully go into wide receiver two mode or low-end wide receiver one, I mean, Drake London has the ability to be a wide receiver one in this league. Um, he just needs to get the actual good targets, catchable targets, and then he could easily be somebody that we talk about Mike Evans touchdown-wise of hitting 10, 12 touchdowns. I, I talked to very a, a, a lot about Mike Evans and Drake London and how they were, I thought, similar molds going into the NFL. And so... Uh, he didn't get the thousand yards like Mike Evans does every year, but I could see that from now on being like a thousand yards and eight, nine touchdowns. 
Uh, that, that that could be a sophomore jump up if he finds any uh, any ability with his quarterback. He just needs a quarterback. And number six or number five, sorry, who's my tenth overall uh, wide receiver? And I had my reasons for it, and I can discuss it a little bit. But Chris Olave, twenty second in standard, twenty fifth in PPR. My biggest thing is I don't think he will be a wide receiver one ever in my lifetime. I just don't think it will happen. If it does happen, it might be like wide receiver 11, 12, and then he's back down to this category. If I'm going to call it the DJ Moore McLaurin area, it's just the middle low end wide receiver two. They're valuable. And that's why he's number five overall. But you look at 72 for 1,042 and four. Again, all these rookies have four touchdowns. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say about Chris Olave. He doesn't get a lot of yards after uh, catch. Also had a bunch of concussions through this last year, which, I mean, he's a great separator, a great route runner on a team that I still think Chris Olave had his ups, had his downs. Um, you're going to get a guy that's going to be hyper-targeted, probably get um, four touchdowns. I mean, what does DJ Moore always get? Five, something like that. I mean, I, this is the, the one that I'm most concerned about, his touchdown upside. I could see him repeating these types of numbers consistently. And maybe he'll get 80 catches for 1,100 yards and four touchdowns. And where are you going to put him? You're probably going to put him right into the low end uh, wide receiver two here. And so that's why Chris Olave is number number five overall. And that's why he was number 10 originally is because I thought his upside was limited. But number six, and I'm going to have him move down because he was number four in pre-season, pre, uh, is Traylon Burks. And so he had 11 games, 54 uh, targets, 444 and one when he was on the field, he was successful. He just didn't get the snap percentages. Um, the quarterback play ended up being much worse than we originally thought. Ryan Tannehill was bad, and then Malik Willis was in there, and you basically you're not getting any catches. <laughs> and then, what was it, Joshua Downs? or I think I always want to say Cribs. I have Joshua Downs or whatever it was. Um, whatever the third quarterback was. I forgot his name. I, bald. Throw, threw it better than Malik Willis, but man, it was just a horrible situation for Traylon Burks. So we're just going to try to scratch this season away, kind of like we're going to do with the next guy. But I think Traylon Burks is going to, he still has that high hype value. When he was on the field, there was glimpses of that, whoa, like that's why he was drafted so high. And so I still have Traylon Burks up there, but this is a big make or break year. I mean, next year you could see him float into the Drake London Garrett Wilson category. Or you could see him float into the Rashad Bateman category uh, where all of a sudden he's just, his value is now just tanking. Uh, number seven, which was my number six last year, uh, Jamison Williams, scratch the season. I'm not even putting anything up in this corner because he didn't really have a season. <laughs> but it's all on upside. And the glimpse, the one or two glimpses that we saw this season, Jamison Williams is a freak of an athlete, speed, uh, just quickness, and we saw what he did in Alabama. We knew the ACL injury was going to take time to recover. People that said that he was going to come back early in the year, I was like, uh, -uh not going to happen. I know how ACL injuries are, especially for quick, quick twitch athletes that rely on separation and stuff like that. Running backs can come back, I think. Well, quarterbacks always soon because they, they sooner because they, they don't need to do the elite athleticism ability. But then you look at like running backs and they seem to even kind of recover in that 12 mark range, unless you're Adrian Peterson. And James Williams just took a little bit of time. They want to make sure that uh, he was ready for, for getting into action because Detroit is probably in a win mode next year. I think they're going to be a really good team next year. And so, and Jared Goff showed that he can be competent and he might have the best comp quarterback and might have the best sophomore season out of. Uh, Drake London, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, and him himself, and even the wide receiver we're going to talk about right after this. All right, so number eight, which was my number eleven last year, and I man, it was hard to judge where to put George Pickens. And George Pickens never had seven catches in a season, and he had three top twelve seasons or three top twelve weeks. Sorry, of the season. George Pickens was all about high, big level plays. He just kind of filled into the Chase Claypool role of having big, long plays. Kenny Pickett is going to be the biggest question for George Pickens. If George Pickens succeeds, it will be because a lot of Kenny Pickett uh, succeeding as well. And so they, those two are going to really go hand in hand here. George Pickens does have that extremely high upside. And he's, I mean, he, ha he fits the package. He fits the package. You put him on Kansas City, you put him on Buffalo, and you're talking about a wide receiver. Again, unfortunately, landing spot is part of the situation. But you're putting him up there with Garrett Wilson. I mean, you're putting him up as a top 10 dynasty wide receiver, but yet you can't because George Pickens is stuck in the Steelers land and you still have some mouths to feed. You still have Najee. You still have Pat Fryer Muth. I mean, you still have uh, a couple of other wide receivers on the team that are going to be sucking away some of these targets. And that's why George Pickens never even had seven catches. And he only had three games over five. So, I mean, that's you're not talking about that many catches and he's just not going to be a hyper-targeted athlete. 
Number nine, which was my number nine last year. It's kind of funny how a couple wide receivers move up and some move below. But I guess the Mendoza line, the line, the, the equator line here is Kenny Pickett. He had seven touchdowns in 13 games. Not good. Had more interceptions than picks or had more interceptions than touchdowns. But he had 55, 237, and three touchdowns on the ground. So he ran. He ran. He looked. He had glimpses of like, oh, there, there's a mobile-ish quarterback. I am looking for him being the sophomore step up. He could be stuck into this quarterback 15 realm. Even if he is, if he's quarterback 15, 18, 19, 20, that's still valuable, especially when you're talking about 12 teams. You have 24 quarterbacks that are likely being started. And if not 24, you're having 22 quarterbacks being started. I think Kenny Pickett's the top 22 quarterback, which means I think he's valuable enough. And I don't think they're going to be moving away from him in the next two, three years. Uh, and so at this point, at number nine, I'll take him. Number 10 is somebody who had number seven. So he did kind of float backwards. It really kind of almost no fault on his own. He was hurt. It's Christian Watson. He had four top six wide receiver weeks and they were all in a row now he also had seven touchdowns in four weeks three two one one i mean it was just an incredible run there the biggest thing is jordan love is might be the starter next week i don't think aaron Rodgers is the starter if aaron Rodgers is claimed to be the starter for the 2022 packer season i think watson could move ahead of pickett and pickens and you're talking about him probably right into the Traylon Burks and Jamison Williams range because watson has that high ability he's on a better offense with a competent quarterback but all of that is yet to be said. I think Green Bay is going into a rebuild. We don't know what Jordan Love is going to actually bring. And so seven touchdowns in four weeks is great, but that's almost all of his production into that four-week stretch. And he was hurt, and he had some glimpses of some drops and stuff like that. So we will see. So now we're going to kind of go through some rapid pace here for the final five guys here. Some players, again, that maybe you're like, why, why is he not talking about Damian Pierce? Because he was my 17th overall. He moved up to 11. But Damian Pierce had, again, an inefficient season for Houston, which we thought was going to happen. And everyone was saying, no, 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 no. Damian Pierce is the guy. I saw him drafted in top five for Dynasty rookie drafts constantly. Once the Houston, what, um, once basically Houston said, hey, he's going to be the starter. Like, he went through the roof. I watched, I watched, and I tried to do my best to trade because uh, Brees Hall got traded for Damian Pierce plus a early second. So it was 104, 101 trade with 104. And I did everything in my power. I had too late first. And I just tried to do anything I could to trade for Brees Hall. Because I was like, please, don't. Don't trade for Brees Hall for Damian Pierce in a late second. I even saw people after the first couple weeks saying, Damian Pierce, top five running back in Dynasty, top 10 running back in Dynasty. I don't see it in Houston. Houston's in a full rebuild. We'll see what their rookie quarterback will be. It's going to be C.J. Stroud, Will Levis. It's going to be Bryce Young. It's going to be somebody. But I just, I think that Damian Pierce is a good enough running back to be a low-end RB2, maybe for a year or two. Maybe I'm a little bit wrong on this. Uh, maybe he ends up being a Ramondre Stevenson and has a decent year or two. Uh, but I think I would rather have the other wide receivers that I think this class is much more talented in wide receivers than they are running backs. Jahan Dotson, 12, was 12 last year that I had him. Had some glimpses of success. Terry McLaurin still going to be the wide receiver one there. They don't have a quarterback right now that is competent. And so that's going to be your biggest issue. A lot of his a lot of his production relied on touchdowns. I don't know if that's going to repeat in, in Washington. Number 13, which was my number eight, Sky Moore. I love Sky Moore, uh, especially his college tape. Just didn't get played at Kansas City. I don't know if that's going to continue. If Juju moves on and maybe Sky Moore has a big sophomore breakout. It's just disappointing because Sky Moore, it, I thought, was going to succeed quite well in Kansas City. And so um, I actually had to pick between Christian Watson and Sky Moore. I slightly picked uh, Christian Watson over Sky Moore when I, had, when, when I was up for my pick. Um, and I feel great about that now, but I'm still confused on why like Sky Moore didn't have a good year. Just wasn't used. Very confusing. Number 13, number 14, sorry, number 13 last year, James Cook. I think that this is going to be the biggest one that I might – bite the bullet. I don't think it's going to be Damian Pierce. I think it might be James Cook because James Cook in the playoffs right now is actually succeeding. And if they don't do anything at the running back position, which I would be shocked if they don't, I think they need to sure up the run game. Devin Singletary is not the answer. Zach Moss or Zach Moss is gone. <laughs> Zach, Moss, Zach Moss is gone. Naeem Hines is the only other running back under contract. We'll see exactly what that has. I think James Cook holds his value in third down, no matter what happens at the running back position. But I could see them going after a first and second down running back that has a little bit more power, a little bit big, bigger built body um, versus compared to James Cook, who is a smaller gadget back. Um, and so I could be wrong on this one, but that's where I have him. And then number 15 before, number 15 after, after I was probably one of the highest actually on him last year was Rashad White. It looked actually pretty good, and Lenny is going to be probably gone. And so when you have that combination, I think Rashad White is going to be fulfilling into that role. 
Tampa Bay, again, could draft a running back or something along those lines, but I believe in Rashad White enough to put him here. I mean, this class has actually done pretty well if you look at it, um, when you look at the top 15 picks. So, yeah, I, I think this is where I have him. Let me know where you think I got him wrong. Let me think where you I, – I, it's probably going to be the Damian Pierce. It's probably going to be – I mean, everyone has their pick. I mean, especially if you own the rookie uh, wide receiver. There's plenty of people that might be going, man, I wouldn't trade – Damian Pierce for Christian Watson. I wouldn't trade Damian Pierce for Traylon Burks, and that's fine. But this is where my rankings are currently. I have to try to try to stay as much water as possible and flow and and change these things as they go. And um, if Tennessee comes starts in the next year and they don't have a good quarterback at all, then maybe Traylon Burks, Burks moves down. And if Damian Pierce's running back situation doesn't change at all, then he might move up. And they, we might look at this in six months, which is why the dynasty stocks go up and down and all over crazy. You might look at this in six months or five months and you might go, oh, look at that. Traylon Burks 9, Damian Pierce 10. Like that could be in the, or 7 and 8 or whatever it might be. Like you might actually see that happen. But right now, this is where they're at going into the future of the playoffs here uh, before the season ends. All right, this is Marcus Nice with that. Peace out. Take care. We'll see you soon.